Everywhere on Earth, from the pyramids to today's skyscrapers, we see what people have built. And one day, people will also build in space. But how, when there's no gravity to keep things anchored down? One NASA researcher knows. Since 2000, Karen Taminger has been nurturing an idea. An idea that's now becoming a reality, destined for space. Taminger, who works at Langley Research Center, and her team are developing a technology to quickly build parts anywhere, even in space, without gravity. It's called Electron Beam Freeform Fabrication, or EBF3. Although the welding industry has used this type of technology to weld pieces together for some time, Taminger's process is radically different. We're actually trying to build entire parts from nothing, just, just from building up the wire, or we're using this to build significant components on a new part. Aside from being fast and cost-effective, the EBF3 process is also unique because of its ability to change chemistries, change microstructures, and incorporate things like sensors into a part as it's being built. Being able to use the layer additive process is a real advantage. And you know, it, that's the big change. That's a paradigm shift from the way we currently make, manufacture metallic parts to the way we hope to manufacture them in the future. The EBF3 process is fairly simple. You need a concept that you take to a drawing. Once the drawing is in the computer, then the software that we have will take that computer drawing, slice it, come up with all the commands to build it, and then you push a button on the machine and it builds. Taminger has been successful at selling her idea to others. Funding from the NASA Aeronautics Program and from Langley's Creativity and Innovation Initiative actually launched the technology. The money made it possible to build a proof of concept in a demonstration model system and to apply for a patent. Companies like Pratt & Whitney, Lockheed Martin, and Boeing, and the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, known as DARPA, also see the potential of EBF3. Because Lockheed Martin would like to use the technology to build components for future aircraft, they help fund the development of some of the technology process for fabricating low-cost complex parts. DARPA has a special interest in being able to manufacture large structures in space, parts too big to be launched. After the portable EBF3 system was built, DARPA provided funds for testing to help better understand how it works. They had done absolutely everything they could do in 1G to show that it would work. The next logical step was, okay, how does it work in microgravity? Besides researchers at other NASA centers and big aerospace companies, the EBF team now includes scientists at the University of Tennessee Space Institute, where they're modeling the process to try and improve it, and at Virginia Tech, where they're developing design optimization and analysis tools for new structural concepts. Through a Small Business Innovation Research, or SBIR contract with Johnson Space Center, engineers at Modern Computational Technologies in Ohio are also doing computational analysis, trying to improve the EBF3 process. NASA scientists and astronauts alike are very excited at the prospect of building parts while in space. Both the space exploration and science missions have invested in the EBF3 development. The E-beam technology offers them a tool that can build other tools and things that, that the astronauts can use in, in pursuit of exploration. Today, Taminger's team is now working on a new configuration, a smaller, nimbler EBF3 system, moving toward the goal of building in space. This is incredibly enabling technology, and it, it will make things you know, that we dream about in the future come true.